Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ahadullah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Nastaghfiruhu wa nastahdihi wa na'udhu lillahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina Min yahdihi qahu fala mudillalah wa min yudlil fala hadiyalah Ashihar wa la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika Allah Ashihar wa anna muhammadan abduhu rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم من يطع الله رسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إن خير الكلام كلام الله خير هدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشير الأمور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة كل بدعة من ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعوذ بالله من النار We thank Allah this sublime and glorious for this opportunity to worship him on this day of Jumu'ah the best day that the sun ever shone on According to the Prophet Muhammad Ali Sallam, Har Yom and Khat Talat Fi Shams Yom Al Jumaa. It's the best day the sun ever came up. He Khulaf Al Adam. The day Adam was created, which began life for us as human beings. The family of the human being, the family of man, as they say, the human family, the human race. He Ulaf Al Jannah. He was placed into the paradise on the day of Jumaa. Inshallah. He Ulaf Al Jannah. He was cast out of the paradise on the day of Juma. But after the Musa'idah, the Yom Juma, Yom Juma, and the hour would not come, the judgment would not come except on the day of Juma. Very special day. Many of all of the early earlier civilizations of Umm were given this day as a day of worship, and none of them maintained it. We're the last Umm, we're the only ones who maintain this day as sacred according to a large prescription that it is the sacred day. It just came to me, one of those things that Imam Jamil used to say sometimes is that you have to understand everything that happens in the context of prevailing political realities. And um, that is especially true in terms of some of the things I want to say today. And it's very, very, very deep insight into events, current events, as you uh, witness things transpiring the political reality, because everybody plays to the political realities. The politicians play to the political realities. The business people play to the political realities. As long as it's beneficial to them, then it's politically expedient to do it, because they stand to gain something from it. But um, this kubba was actually composed in the context of today's prevailing reality. Sort of a backstory. Not talking directly about Palestine in particular, but about Palestine and everything that resembles Palestine since the beginning of time. It's not the first time this has happened. <coughs> it's happened many times to many different people in many places on the, on the, on the globe, on the planet. A lot of the question, rhetorical as they may say. إنا خلقنا الإنسان من نطفة أمشاج نمتليه فجعلناه سميعا بصيرا إنا هديناه السبيل إما شاكرا وإما كفورا إنا عاتدنا أبي كافرين صلاة وأغلالا وسعيرا That is, has it not come upon the human being a time when there was nothing even to be mentioned? That is in two different contexts. Something that you don't like to mention as being your origin, those fluids, that are lowly fluids. So God, how can any be, anyone be arrogant when they come from such fluids? As we see as something not even nice to talk about. Try to find pleasant words to use when we speak about these things in public. It was not a time when you were nothing to even be mentioned that we want to mention what we came from or you didn't exist so that you couldn't be mentioned. But you have always existed with a loss of how to out in the azim, in the azim, inshallah, that will come clear in a moment. 
إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ نُطْفِنْ يَمْشَاجِ مِنْ تَلِيهِ Allah says he has created us from a mixed fluid so that he would test us. So he gave us intellect or hearing and sight, hearing and comprehension, and he gave us sight. So our purpose is we're tested. إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلُ إِمَّا شَيْكَرًا إِمَّا كَفُورًا Allah says he has made plain to us the way of guidance. And he will be grateful, or we will be kafura, ungrateful. As the shaitan is the father of ungratefulness. He is ever ungrateful to his Lord. Thus, the verse says that whoever is a squanderer is a brother or sister to shaitan. Because shaitan is ungrateful. And when you squander, it's showing that you're ungrateful. So you resemble shaitan and your ingratitude and our ingratitude. And Allah always makes us to be grateful to him. So Allah has created us for a test. And he has made, he has facilitated us for that test by giving us intellect that we can think and we can understand and comprehend. And he says, Allah is the one who has created the heavens and the earth. And has made this earth to be our place of residence. And he has sent down rain from the skies. So he has made the yield of the earth to produce everything you need from the fruits and the vegetables and what the animals eat. He has made that to be a favor for us, a service for us. And he has made the ships to be of service to us as they sail the seas, carrying the goods that we need from place to place. And he has also made the rivers to be of service to you. And he has made the sun and the moon to be of service to us as they pursue their appointed courses. And he has also made the night and the day to be of service to us. And he has given you of everything that you have ever asked for. When light lasts And if you sought to count or measure the favors of Allah, they are uncountable and immeasurable. In the insana of Allah. But the human being is an extreme transgressor. The political reality. Extreme transgression that we are seeing today around the planet. Extreme transgression that many of us in our lifetime have never seen before or just heard about somebody. Kafar, ever ungrateful for their Lord's blessings. In terms of the seen and the known world that we live in, Allah says, he said, most of human beings have no knowledge. They do not know. They know about the apparent things of this world, the surface knowledge of this world, and about the reality, the true reality that comes after this, the life of the hereafter, they are completely heedless in our mind. And where did we come from into this world? With Akhadar Rabbu Kamin Bani Adam and Gurahim Duhurahim Duriyatihim Asharhum Allah and Fusahim Allah's to Rabbikum. Kalu Bala and the Shah and Takulu Yama Kiyam, Kalu Bala, Shahidina, and Takulu Yama Kiyam is in that Kunan Hadad Rafi. Now, this verse, how these verses, Allah makes it very clear that everybody knows La ilaha illallah. Nobody would ever be able to deny on the day of judgment they did not know La ilaha illallah. It's the victory that we were created. Allah says in the verse, and remember, remind the people that Adam, that Allah took from Adam all of his progeny, his descendants, generation after generation after generation, everybody who would ever be born, Allah brought them forth on the other side in the world of the unseen and unknown to us, the way that only Allah knows. In that realm, he took Every individual from the back the loins of Adam that will ever be born, or Ashhadahum Alain Fusim, and took their testimony 
for or against themselves. Now, let's do that. Am I not your Lord? Better that. Everyone said yes, of course. So here's now. We, we bear witness. Allah said, this is established so that you cannot sit on a judgment and be a judgment. We had no knowledge about talking. We had no knowledge of your existence. We had no knowledge of your goddess. Allah has placed that in the human being. It's our responsibility to commit ourselves to it. Allah com com presented the responsibility of the well-being of his creation. That is, Allah says he presented the amana, the trust. That is, the vicegerents, as they say, being Allah's representative in the earth and keepers of Allah's creation, protectors of, Allah, of Allah's creations, maintainers of Allah's creation, the peace and the justice and the equity, the fairness. He presented this to the heavens and the earth and the mountains. So he mentioned the heavens and the earth and the mountains are part of the earth. But the mountains are so strong, so mighty, stabilize the earth as it's rotating so it doesn't reverberate. So they, so they refused it out of fear that they would not be able to fulfill the responsibilities of this trust. But it's fucking them in now. They refused it and they were fearful of it, that they would not be up to the job. Because Allah says that this amana is the basis on which he will punish the hypocrites and the disbelievers and he will reward the believers. But when it was presented to the human being, then the human being accepted this trust. Allah says that he was that he was unjust to himself and transgressing because he had no idea what he was assuming in accepting this trust. But we all are entrusted with something. Everyone is entrusted with something. You are entrusted with the life that Allah gave you, the intellect he gave you, the health and the strength he gave you, your cognitive ability to think and make decisions. And people are betraying their trust wholesale. Political reality, that the, the politicians who are entrusted by their constituency to represent us back in 1776 at the Constitutional Convention, senators, Congress people, representatives in the House, they didn't get any payment for that. I don't believe they got even uh, um, the expenses covered. But they never had salaries in the beginning. It was a public service. It used to be a public service. Now these people who have been entrusted for protecting us in every way, protecting our food, protecting our safety, protecting our finances, they are failing us. They are failing us miserably. Now they have lifetime benefits, lifetime salaries, and who has been multi-millions multi, multi for a position that doesn't pay one million dollars? Unless there is some serious benefit from that. Even the president doesn't make a million dollars a year. Billions to get that position. There must be something there. So we have a trust. And we have a citizenship here. A green card or whatever it is. That's a trust. You have an obligation to this country. And your obligation is not... Nothing takes precedent over laws... Responsib the responsibility we have to Allah, wherever we may be. So being here as Muslims, we have to represent this thing. These people are desperately in need of Islam. Desperately in need of seeing what a real human being is like. How a real human being is supposed to live. The values, the morals that human beings are supposed to have and subscribe to. Some of the ulama talk about this <coughs> amana, and they talk about it in the terms of our religious obligations. It is obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maintaining the farai, those things that are obligatory. Maintaining the 
maintain those things that are obligatory, staying away from those things that are prohibited. A lot of different explanations, all the way to the individual, protecting your modesty and your chastity. All those things are trust. And Minerva you know, Jeremiah says that none of these things are contradictory, they're all true. Whatever anyone is entrusted with of somebody else's well being or property, that is a part of your mind. And he said that the, 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 the mankind underestimated, underestimated the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah said that the insane is unjust and ignorant. And that does not mean that it precludes the injustice and the ignorance that we see people perpetrating and violating the trust they have to do good towards their fellow human beings. I will call the head of our staff, Allah, and then they will come with the Sardis and the Kula Jampa State Road. And no, for the poor Rahim. I say these things seeking to forgive us a lot for that reason alone. May Allah forgive us for our sins, ask Allah for forgiveness, so may Allah forgive us for our sins. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam, wa rasul wa salam, wa ala'ali wa salatu wa salam. Interesting that the people in the secular world talk about the same thing that we were just reviewing amongst ourselves in terms of trust. Even they put in the money in God we trust. People interpret that a lot of different ways, but they understand I get it that we don't trust in the money, we trust in God. God used to be the central focus in America. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. That's a beautiful thing. Where is it? So you don't even hear people saying that anymore because we never made it true as a nation. It wasn't true then. Much of what was put into the Constitution only applied to landowners because people couldn't vote unless you were a landowner. So politically, you didn't count. There were some women and some free Negroes who own property, and even the lower class that came from Britain, that came later. Some people in the lower class were facilitated uh, in purchasing land, but the lower class of whites could not even vote. Even it was suggested, they sought to pass a bill to castrate them so that their lot wouldn't penetrate in the world. People like them wouldn't penetrate what we call the poor whites. SubhanAllah. But at the same time, I'd like to read to you something that the, the people from their psychology, but they don't talk a lot about, but they have documented this, and on the day of judgment, they'll be held accountable for it. The failure to uphold the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has everything to do with taqwa, being mindful of Allah, and estimating the gravity of this responsibility and being mindful of how committed we are to it and how well we are maintaining it individually. They talk about moral engagement. And in order to maintain the trust that Allah put on us, that He offered and we accept it, we have to be morally engaged. We cannot abandon our morals and our ethics. They say moral engagement is a person's commitment to positive social constructs. It's a beautiful thing and compassionate care for others. Political reality now that we're dealing with today is a moral engagement and compassionate care for others. You see that research has shown that there is a connection between an individual's morality, that is their moral self-view, their moral self-view, how they see themselves morally, and their behavior. Individuals who value and express empathy and concern for others who behave positively in social gatherings commonly display a sense of moral engagement. Now this, this is something they really started coming up with when we had so much bullying everywhere. <coughs> and it's getting even worse. Just recently, they almost got into a fight on the Senate floor. SubhanAllah. Now on the opposite side, moral disengagement. 
And subhanAllah, brother, this is, this, is, this is a very deep reality because this is the essence of what we're here for. Moral disengagement, there's something else that goes along with this, not to get too scientific, but it's called cognitive dissonance. And if you can look into some of that, you'll start to understand a lot of reasons why people do things they do. The Jews claim they are the Allah's a help with the law, that they are the, the, his beloved, and they are his own children. And the rest of us are just facilitating their needs, that we're not even human beings. And that whole concept of considering somebody as inhuman, that's another subject, but it's a part of this one. Moral disengagement as a concept in social psychology is a process by which an individual convinces himself or herself that a certain set of ethics and morals don't apply to them in a given situation. <laughs> oh. Or a certain context. It results from separating moral reactions from inhumane conduct. Is it not immoral what is happening when you cut off the water going into a person's Neighborhood, I don't know what you call it now, because Gaza is not even, they've taken and broken it up so much. I don't know, what do you call it? It's a prison, open their prison, laws open their prison. Cut off the water, cut off the energy. I mean, everything. Now, you just take everything from the people, and you claim to be God-fearing people, the beloved of Allah, and his special children. How could you do something like that to another human being? Except you say he's not a human being. So when you objectify Human beings are not being human beings, something else. Okay, then you don't have to have a conscience about it. The same thing they did with the Native Americans. The same thing was done with the slaves. They're not human beings. SubhanAllah. Moral disengagement results from a separated moral reaction from inhumane conduct and disengaging, disengaging the mechanism of personal accountability. It's a thing called burning conscience. A lot of the Israeli soldiers are leaving IDF now. And this is what they start talking about there. Some of the reasons for this moral disengagement are othering, objectification, and a sense of entitlement. Othering is like, if you are not the same as me, you are other than I am. So you can't be as good. You must be less than. And it leads to being subhuman or less than human. Objectification, seeing people as objects. And to the Multinational corporations, we're all objects to their bottom line figures. Objects. <coughs> Not human beings. Well, I said, but no, Allah has not my yamal of Dolimon. In the Mayahir whom the young man has for Sophia of Sorrow. Mohain and Mokna Yerusa him, lay out of the lay him over him, happy that the home. Allah says, Do not consider. That Allah is unaware of what the wrongdoers are doing. The Ghulum and Kafir, those who are extreme transgressors and ungrateful to Allah. Don't think that he's unaware of what they are doing. He only gives them respite to a day when their eyes will stare in horror. They'll be hastening for it with necks outstretched. Their heads raised up towards the sky. Their gaze returning not towards them. Their hearts are empty. And my first said their hearts are empty because they're in their throats. Their, 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 their chest is empty of the heart because it's all the way in their throat. From the anxiety and the fear of what might be about to happen. And Allah said, In Allah, you believe the bottom. I tell you, the Ahadahu, let me flit through. He said that there will come a time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grasp and seize the wrongdoers. And he will not let them escape. And then the Messenger of Islam recited, And such is the grasp of your grasp of your Lord when he takes hold of the transgressing communities of civilizations or nations. When he takes hold of them and grasps them while they are transgressing against themselves and against the loss of power. That's not how to protect us from disengaging ourselves morally, rationalizing what we know is wrong, and searching our hearts 
but I help it to search our hearts, our minds, and trigger us. I used to be so frustrated when I see people leaving in the pen penitentiary of all places. A hopeless place. Most people in the penitentiary die in the penitentiary. You don't get out of there. But by Allah's mercy, one brother recently, his release date was deceased. He wrote in that release date, deceased. No numbers, just deceased. After 26 years, he's Muslim on the street, mashallah. Another brother, 56 years. 21 life sentences. SubhanAllah, he's on the streets. And there's a lot of that going on. A lot of that going on. That's Allah's mercy. He is visited to who will. But we have to search our hearts, though. Where is our commitment? And I used to be frustrated. They say, well, brother Imam, until a person comes in here and learns he has to trust something more than his own thinking, he keeps coming back. Because our best thinking is what God did in the first place. I was supposed to be set up for life with this thought I had to do this. I set up for life, right? Two or three life sentences. So we have to learn to trust Allah and not trust ourselves. I said, and people say, well, share with me. Allah says, you will love something that's bad for you. You will dislike something that's good for you. Allah, y'all don't that time. Allah knows you do not know. We don't know what's good for us because we didn't make ourselves. We didn't go somewhere and apply to be born or make ourselves come into existence. Are you created from nothing or you created yourself? Allah is the one who created us and created everything for our service and gave us a responsibility. Now, I help with that responsibility in some way. We need to be the Muslims. And may Allah seize those transgressors, the transgressing people, the wrongdoing people. <coughs> and as He wills to guide them or punish them. And Allah bring relief to those who are suffering. And Allah bring victory to those who are struggling against oppression all throughout the land. And Allah accept that with you, mashallah, your peace and best proper house. All second, come to Salah.